Introducing Amethyst, a multi-TC base with open core, a spacious starter, two roof bunkers, and a wide gap shooting floor, fit for a duo, trio, or quad. But before we get into the tour, first, you should check out rustyrocket.gg. Rusty Rocket is a Rust gambling site, where you can deposit your own skins, crypto, or cash to win. You even get a 35% deposit bonus when you use your PayPal. They offer some great games, including Blackjack, Mines, Towers, and Plinko. When you win, you can choose from a huge selection of skins, available in the shop to withdraw. Visit Rusty Rocket today, and use my affiliate code, CROWBUILDING, to get a free 50 cents when you first log in. Remember, 18 plus only, please gamble responsibly. Thanks to Rusty Rocket for the sponsor. Now the tour. First, I'll show you the upkeep in the externals. There are four in total, with the same upkeep in each opposite TC. All externals are disconnectable, meaning you can easily replace your main TC if it gets destroyed in a raid. I'll demonstrate the mechanism during the build. Now to the gatehouses. There's one on either side of the base, with Sunder Peaks looking back into the compound, and loot storage in the roof with turret pods built in. On the other two sides, we have bedrooms in the compound, with turrets above, boxes in the roof, and vending machines in the back for drone and player transactions. And from here, you can see the magnificent shooting floor. Running through the airlocked entrance, we have two breach peaks on this side to survey the compound, with peaks overlooking the shell, turrets above, and space for batteries. Jumping up to the next floor, we can run through the middle of the base to access the other side, which has the same great features. Going through the single door leads down to the starter core, with plenty of space to get you going. And here's the upkeep for the main TC, which can fit over two days and materials in. Jumping back up to the second floor, we have an entrance on either side that leads up to the open core. In here, there is space for a couple of vending machines and storage equal to 22 large boxes, all protected by their turrets and peaks above. To access the bunkers, just crouch here and look up to place a triangle roof. Do the same on the other side to open the other bunker. Jump up to the next floor, where we have some more respawn points, with peaks overlooking the open core. Next to them, we have a bunker on each side, to store your best loot and batteries. Here, I'll show you the other side of the base, with another bunker. Running out through this door, with the wide gap shooting floor, with all the great peaks you come to expect, for a base designed in 2022 perfect for defending your territory. On opposite sides of the shooting floor, we also have a couple of peak ups to take back your roof in case of a top down raid. In case anyone tries to blow a hole inside of your base, you can use these drop down peaks to guard the breach. Jumping up through the single door, you have even more roof peaks with an exit through the garage door. Up here, we'll find ramp peaks on all four sides of the base, as seen in all of my designs. There's even space in the centre for a heli garage, should you need it. First we'll build the starter. If you're a bit strapped for resources at the beginning of the wipe, you could build it in stages, like so. In this tutorial, everything will be built in its final material, so just upgrade as you go. As always, remember to lock your TC, otherwise there's no point in having externals. Don't put a shelf in the square yet, as you can use it for furnaces, boxes and bags as you progress. Now to expand the starter. This is not an easy base to build, so please practice it in a build server before trying it for real. 
You can always load it on rusticated or sanctuary build servers to take a closer look. Make sure all the garage doors are facing the same way so they can't be splashed. Now the basic starter is done, you can add a shelf in here. Then build twig roofs on each corner as temporary entrances. To prevent door camping, expand the roof entrance like so. Obviously, you won't be using garage doors here at this point. And don't forget to put the furnaces here as a jump up. In order for the bunkers to work, we need a wall stack on two sides of the base. To do this, build up by seven squares and a triangle. Now remove all the build up, not the triangle. then build back towards the base with the passing of four half moons. Followed by a triangle at the end and upgrade it. As you can see, this creates a tiny gap between the triangle and the base, which is necessary for the bunkers to work. But obviously it's not connected to a TC yet, so we'll have to do that now. Now remove all the twig foundations. Build out from the wall stack triangle with four square foundations, upgrading the last one to metal. Now place a pattern of twig foundations like so, which is necessary for the disconnectable TC to work. Upgrade the last three triangles for the TC housing. You must put two half walls here for the disconnecting mechanism to work. Now join the external to the gatehouse with a series of frames, like so. So if your main TC gets destroyed in a raid and you need to replace it, place a twig foundation with the roof here to disconnect the external TC. To reconnect, remove the twig and replace the frames. Before connecting the wall stack triangle to the gatehouse, complete the footprint as shown. Then put two walls in the middle and connect the foundations together with a wall on this side and a window on the other. Build a twig frame, a half wall and a triangle here so you can place a square on the other side. Next, put the foundations for the wide gap shooting floor and connect them together with metal frames. After that, connect the wide gap to the gatehouse with more frames. Finally, place a half wall on top of the gatehouse and connect it to the shell like so. This whole section needs to be done in one go. Now you need to repeat this step on the other side of the base. If you're at all confused, watch the animation that comes up next.
Now the wall stacked parts are connected to the externals. We can seal in the shell. Place more frames here to support the floors above and a triangle to house a turret. Copy this on the other side of the base. Now build the breech peaks and the honeycomb on the back of the loot room. Only place the roof on the breech peak next to the door. Don't place it on the other breech peak yet as we won't be able to build the other wide gap. For now, just use a twig triangle as a jump up. Extend the breech peaks up to the second floor. The triangle frames ensure that no one can get in through the windows. Again, repeat this on the other side of the base. Seal this breech peak off with a wall. Make sure it's the one next to the door. As you can see, it's the same on both sides. Then seal in the roof. Okay, stop. As I was recording the voiceover for this video, I realized I could have incorporated a peek into the jump ups that looks back into the shooting floor. So rather than re-record hours and hours of footage, I squeezed it in here. You won't see it in the rest of the tutorial, but don't worry, it won't affect the way anything else is built. Build another one exactly the same on the other side. Now that the shell is a bit more secure, we can add all the details inside. Build a half wall here and put a triangle on top to place a shotgun trap in the airlock. Once you have boxes in between the gaps of the foundations, you can place a battery behind the window. Remember to place a turret before the fences. You can put extra doors here for now if you don't want people jumping over. Oh, and also, you should probably make these two foundations HQM, as if they're destroyed in a raid, they can't be replaced easily. Build out from the base with this pattern. Now we're going to build the other two externals and the wide gap foundations, so we can seal in the compound. Delete the build up apart from the last triangle. Then build back towards the base. Again, if you're confused about the build out pattern, watch the cinematic after this. Join these three triangles together with frames and delete the build up. Place a square for the gatehouse, then build out using the same pattern as before for the external TC. I've speeded this part up as it's exactly the same as the first one we built.
connect it to the gatehouse using a single door so we can place a vending machine inside. Now build the compound bedroom. Again, repeat this on the other side and watch the animation coming up if you're at all confused. Now build gatehouses that we skipped earlier. Build another one on the other side of the base, then seal in the compound. Remember to place your furnaces as close to the walls as possible, so you have space to build the wide gap foundations. Now the externals are built, we can replace this triangle floor with a roof. For the open core, build walls all around the outside. Seal in the tops and build another layer inside. Repeat this on the opposite side of the base. Now to build the loop rooms. Place a half wall to place a shelf first. This wall must face this way in order to cover the gap caused by the wall stacking. Place ramps inside all the loop rooms, so raiders can't come in through the back wall. You must place the bottom one first. Do this again on the opposite side. Now put a single door frame here for the vending machine. You must put a vending machine here, otherwise you won't be able to place the roof till it opens the bunker. Place all the garage doors backwards, so the small boxes don't poke through. Build a solid wall here, and then windows above each loop room. Then build twig scaffolding, so you can place another layer at half height. After that, Add the triangle frames for the turrets to sit on. They must be metal. You can use ladders to place the turrets easily. Around four turrets is fine for this open core, but you can put down six if you prefer. Now the open core is complete. Now we're going to build the bunkers. 
upgrade this floor and this wall. Place another wall on the left, making sure both of them are facing in. Place a ceiling attaching to the inner wall. Don't worry about these gaps for now, we can fill them later. To seal this gap, upgrade the window. As you can see, the conditional model covers it. For now, this wall must stay stone, as I'll explain in a bit. Build a half wall and a window here for the roof peak up. The entrance will go here with two more garage doors. Obviously right in front of you here, you have the window at half height. Just place a half wall on top of it. Repeat this process in exactly the same way on the other side of the base. Now go onto the roof to seal it. Pay close attention to the placement of this triangle, otherwise the bunker will seal forever. Do the same all around the outside of the roof. To cover this small gap here, place a frame attaching to the triangle. This can only be done if the wall below is stone. Upgrade both to metal when you're finished. To cover this gap in the top of the bunker, first you must open it with the triangle roof, and then attach a triangle to the ceiling. Now to cover the final gap in the corner, place a wall frame here, making sure it's rotated correctly and upgraded to armoured. Repeat this step on the other side. Drop me down here, you can see all the gaps are closed. Now I can extend the wine gap foundations from the compound bedrooms. Upgrade these parts and delete the build up. Attach all the foundations together with frames. Build this again on the opposite side of the base. Extend all the frames up to the fourth floor and add floors. Now build the drop down peaks here, and the roof peak up and entrance. Place window frames all around the shooting floor with embrasures. Now build wall frames in every slot on the triangles, except for the ones next to the bunkers. Here, 
place a half wall and a triangle to put a triangle shelf inside the bunker. Now you can seal in the entire roof with squares and triangles, but obviously leave a gap for the roof peak ups. peaks, build half walls to seal it in, and a frame here and siren lights to jump up on. Put doors in these frames to separate the shooting floor and stop anyone from going deep. Disguise the bunkers with doors either side. build triangle roofs either side of the roof exit. And on these four corners, build the ramp peaks. Use a piece of twig here to place the roofs on the front and the back white gaps. Then build turret housings in these locations. Lastly, build your windmill towers. Feel free to add more if you wish. Obviously, you need to use ladders to place these. One last thing, I'm going to show you how to open the bunkers again. As I know lots of you don't seem to bother to watch the tour for some crazy reason. So just copy my exact positioning to place a triangle roof. If you did watch the tour, then you'll notice that in the bunkers I have salvaged shelves. These are unfortunately unreliable, as sometimes the boxes can break when you open the bunkers. Using a triangle shelf at half height is more reliable, but a bit tricky to place the battery in other boxes. So do it in exactly this order to maximise the storage. Well done, you've completed the base. To see more of these crazy builds, like, subscribe, and join my Discord and Twitch. Thanks for watching, and even more so for 10k subs. Cheers.